The Shade Binder, a subclass, is something I'm still experimenting with for other builds in mind, but from my current experience with it at the moment, this has been one of Bungie's best crowd control subclass they've ever released. Well, for now. The whole subclass has the ability in flow to allow you to stop and shatter every movement around you a tad better than the Titan and Hunter subclass, and you'll ultimately want to use this for anything large scale involving ways of enemies to take on. Nightfalls, Gambit, PvP, you name it. This subclass can do the work, and its new additional melee and grenades are also something worth fully investing in. And funnily enough, that's what we will be doing today, in today's video. To enhance the melee perk, Penumbral Blast, a bit more to play within our playstyle and role, we'll be chucking in the use of Chargeable Light mods, Monte Carlo, and Claws of Ahamkara, with some aspects, of course, to create a large scale CC build with near unlimited Penumbral Blast at your liking. This build here is going to become a very common setup that you'll see with new and old players, and will allow you to get the feeling of the new subclass until you're ready to play around with other aspects once they're made available. So for the subclass, we will be using the Shade Binder and utilising the new Penumbral Blast and Dusk Field grenades, with the Whisper of Refraction and Whisper of Fissures fragments. Unlike the Light subclasses, the Shade Binder subclass offers us more room to customise what perk we want to use at any time. And if things do go well, we may see the idea be adopted for the light subclass in the future. Penumbral Blast is the main focus of the build, and where the majority of abilities and power will head to, and this will allow us to freeze any enemy on contact and then set up the chain reaction from there. With the use of fragments, we can enhance this area more in two simple ways. Whisper of Refraction will grant us ability energy per enemy killed via Frozen or Slowed, and the Whisper of Fissures will increase the damage and size burst of our stasis upon destruction. We also have the Ice Flare Bolts aspect, which will allow us to increase its tracking to be slightly more aggressive than normal, which is handy against the Fallen Captains who like to teleport a lot. With everything here, including the exotics, we should be able to have a nice flow of constant ability energy coming our way every time we get a kill with stasis, and then a much more larger stasis blast should occur for allowing us to freeze more on a large scale with added damage. This is as simple and as easy as it can get for you from here. Please note though, I believe the Whisper of Refraction is currently bugged and not allowing us to gain ability energy at the moment. This doesn't stop the build from being useful though, but it may be wise for you to pick another fragment until it's fixed. For your grenades, the Dusk Field grenades are the best choice to pick for their large radius effect and the ability to pull others in who are near it which is perfect for starting a chain reaction on our end. For weapons, you're going to need the Monte Carlo and then a secondary of your choice with the Demolitions Park to help with getting your dust field grenades up and going. Heavy falls in the same category of whatever suits you best, but I've decided to go with a grenade launcher for its blast radius. The Monte Carlo is a perfect match for this, or generally any build in mind, if you're focusing primarily on the melee use of all times. With his exotic perk, Monte Carlo Method, dealing damage with his weapon will reduce our melee cooldown and also grant us a chance to fully charge our melee upon a kill. This combined with the Claws of Ahamkara will allow us to use the Penumbral Blast exotic two times with a chance of it being fully charged. The weapon also comes with a perk called Markov Chain, where we can increase our weapon's damage up to times 5 and can also auto reload our weapons upon a melee kill and then gain a times 5 weapon bonus at the same time. Putting two and two together should show you why this is a good thing, but in short, you'll be able to have a constant weapon buff at all times as long as you use your melee in some way or form, and doing so successfully will net us melee energy back, so a constant rotation is always going to be pulled in for you. If you don't have the weapon, then the Traveler's Chosen Sidearm is also a good replacement to have. For a secondary, I'm using the Truth Teller Grenade Launcher with Demolitionist and Field Prep. As any weapon with Demolitionist is viable for the build that we're going for, I've decided to pair my loadout with a weapon that can cover ground easily and can hit just as hard if you had a shotgun with you. I've mentioned this before in my last video, but as grenade launchers are great with dispersing areas quickly, I believe that using this as part of a crowd control setup would help when I need to break things up and control the fight in my favour. Not only would the demo perk come in handy for my dust filled grenades, but also allow me to wipe out a large group of enemies in one go and kick off the chain reaction in the process. At the same time, getting a large group kill with a weapon will net me back grenade energy as well, and will hopefully allow me to get my grenades fully stocked up again, to then repeat the process again and again. So now we will have a constant of full grenade energy and full millis at our disposal whenever we go ahead and commit to our combo. 
For a heavy, I've chosen to use the Outrageous Fortune Grenade Launcher with Quick Draw, Auto Load the Holster and High Explosive Ordnance. Nothing too special for the Grenade Launcher and the roll I have, and you may want to go ahead and get yourself one with the Spike Grenade perk instead for boss DPS. My roll is more designed for two things, either wiping out a large group of tough adds that my secondary can't do, or just boss DPS with the added stasis effect in play, and more designed for allowing me to quickly pull it out, dump all my rounds in one salvo. I rarely use my heavy as the setup is already pretty strong with the use of our secondary, but in case things don't go the way we want it to, then it never hurts to have something like this as a backup. For the stats, you're going to want to focus in spreading all your discipline, recovery and resilience to the near same level as each other, and then have your strength stat at around the 60 to 70 ranges. Depending on how your armor stat levels are leveled out, you want the three main stats, discipline, resilience and recovery to be at 50 and generally nothing else from there, unless you plan to go into end game, to which you can then go ahead and boost your recovery speed a bit more higher. Your strength stat will vary in terms of how often you want to proc your melee. At 70, you can get a 45 second cooldown, which will benefit you greatly when being used alongside the Monte Carlo. If that feels too much with the mods being used as well, then reducing it down to 50 or ideally 60 is a great point to hit, with the rest of the points left over allowing you to place it to wherever you like it to be. For your armor, any season mod slots are fine to use as you will only need the charge with light mods and most importantly, the heavy handed mod for arc affinity. Your exotic armor piece will need to be at arc affinity for the momentum transfer perk for free melee energy upon grenade damage. Now, as we covered everything here, here are the mods that we currently be using and how they will benefit the build. For our head, we have minor strength mod and heavy handed mod. Arm, we have the recovery and momentum transfer mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Concussive Dampener times 2, and Sustained Charge mod. A leg, we have Strength, Absolution, and Insulation mod. Bond, we have Minor Discipline mod, Distribution, Outreach, and Radiant Light mod. If you're new to using the Shade Binder subclass, then this pretty simple setup should allow you to get up to date with everything and allow you to do any type of content that will have a large presence of enemies everywhere. So, strikes, gambits, and generally anything really. The tracking and radius of the penumbral blast is widely considered great by a lot of players who have played around with it, and it can instantly freeze those within its vicinity, leaving them to be easily shattered by your weapons or melee again if you want to activate your Monte Carlo buff. Like I said earlier, with the way the build is set up, you'll be able to have a constant stream of melee ability available through the use of Monte Carlo or from the heavy handed perk and whichever one you have will allow you to get two melees available at all time. So, for example, if you see a group of enemies approaching you and a boss coming your way as well, freeze them with both your melees and gain half your melee back by destroying them. Enemy team approaching you with a super, freeze them, take out the super user. Become cornered and need a way to get out of danger quickly, just freeze them and reposition yourself. The build will allow you to control the feel within your favour every time you use your melee, and as long as it hits a target, just one is enough for you to change the pace of the gameplay. As remember, we have the Whispers of Fisher's Fragment active, which upon defeating a stasis enemy, will increase the damage and burst size of the frozen target, so generally it's going to be a large AoE damaging effect. This is what ultimately will allow you to fill out the crowd control role a bit more efficient, the same way that using a Nesrak Sin and a Tunnel of Hunger build can fill in as well. And I can definitely say without a doubt that this is a build that many players will use first time to get a feel of how powerful the shape binder can be, as the majority of items here are stuff that most players will have already, such as the two exotics we have, but if not, then you can get them via Xur, who may sell them down the line, and even then you can still use the build effectively without them. The same can be said for the mods, the heavy handed mod and sustained charge mod for example can allow you to have near infinite melee all the time, when combined with everything else but it's not always needed as if you have the high strength stat and the Monte Carlo available as well, you can just easily switch to that. So you can still play with the build no matter what you have, which is great for the new light players. Now one downside to using the build is that it's not great for boss DPS, which of course should make sense since the whole theme of the subclass is crowd control. It can do some pretty hefty damage, but don't expect any more than that. At the same time, be careful when using this against explosive targets who will try to get out close to you and try to detonate onto you, as though you can freeze them before that happens, if you're in very close melee range, 
then you have a high chance of getting yourself killed instead of actually going ahead and freezing them. Then there's also the whisper of refraction issue with it generally not working, but that should hopefully be fixed quite soon. Overall, this build should get you very interested in experimenting with Estasis abilities more, and there's a great intro build for all to try. If you've been looking to play as a crowd controller more in Destiny but you never had your chance to do so, then this build should fill that itch for you. So if you enjoyed the video, then leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.